go, 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 let's get it. I'm a traffic fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick, I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most, I tell her little bitch, so extra. Wow. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me, niggas, they wanna fight, they some wrestlers. Hey, you know Here, our grand story begins with the birth of Yoichi Isagi, born to two former pro footballers. Isagi was naturally gifted at the sport. From the age of four, he could dribble the ball way better than any other kid his age. His rapid development even caused him to play up in an age group in his club teams. Isagi was now at the age of six, was seen dribbling around the defenders of the opposing team while smiling. No one on the pitch seemed to be his equal and he enjoyed crushing them. He scores easily and then makes a mockery of those around him. He occasionally does pass when he gets tired, but even Isagi grows out of this habit. It gets to the point where throughout his life, Isagi becomes bored with playing football. He had become way too good, which made him begin suppressing his own skills so that he could try and enjoy football again. This is when we have another time skip to almost a 17 year old Yoichi Isagi. He was sleeping in the locker room when his coach would go to sub him into the game as they were trying to win the finals for their high school team. Where is Isagi? The players on the bench then look towards the locker rooms and tell the coach that he's in there still. He then tells them to go get them as they're losing and they need some quick goals to close out this match. They walk in seeing Isagi laying down with his eyes closed. Hey man, you wake him up. No way dude. Last time, do you even know what he did to me? It's your turn to get beat up. Hey, shift for brains. You mind keeping it down? I'm actually trying to sleep. Isagi looks towards their pale faces while he stands up. So, we must be losing, huh? Whatever. I'll lead this terrible team to victory once again. This is one of our last games. Isagi throws his practice jersey off to the side and begins walking down the hallway to the pitch where he sees that the score was 2-0. Isagi subs in quickly and walks slowly onto the pitch without even stretching or anything, no warm-ups at all. Kira is the first one to notice how tall and lean Isagi was. So, you're their striker. Maybe if you were in earlier, they wouldn't have lost this match. Lost? I don't know defeat. I'm the best there ever is. Kira didn't know what he meant by this, but watched as Isagi received a pass. He stood straight up with it, with the ball below his feet. Let's see. He begins counting all the defenders in his way and size. Maybe one of you could shock me today. Kira runs towards the ball to try and steal it from him, but Isagi overwhelms him with dribble moves and gets right around him with ease. What? What was that? Isagi smiles and continues dribbling forward, doing the same with every player. He doesn't even pass as he eventually dribbles himself right into a corner. Wait a minute, he can't shoot from there. This is when Isagi cuts and turns, opening up the shot that curves into the back corner, hitting the post and into the goal. Well, that's one. The crowd then goes wild for this astonishing player, as they could hope to see even more from him as this match continues. Kira himself didn't even know a player like this could exist, especially within Japan. Isagi then walks back to his starting position and yawns. Hey, coach, sub me out, I'm bored. No, damn it, we need you to score two more goals, then I'll let you sub out. Whatever. Isagi goes on to lead his team to victory with his overwhelming talent and presence on the pitch. But he skips the interview, as they are his style, and he just walks away from the reporter. He'd rather go home and sleep. His parents, when he's home, begin showing him his potential and all the clubs that he could go to, as they've been calling all day, especially after the match. He looks through and says he'll decide on it later. This is when a couple weeks would pass by, and Isagi gets one final letter from a place called Blue Lock. He tells his parents that he's decided, and he heads off to the facility. So, this is it. Hey Yoichi Isagi. Damn it, what now? Isagi turns, seeing an unfamiliar face. He then glares at him, not knowing who he was. Wait, you don't remember me? I'm Kira. Nope, doesn't ring a bell at all. Isagi then waves and walks into the facility, seeing all the other strikers and begins laughing. It's amusing. All these guys think they could become Japan's best. 
He listens to Ego's speech while pushing his way through the crowd. Before Ego could even finish, Isagi was on the stage. He takes his hand out from his pocket and puts it behind his head. Well, I'm bored of listening, so let's just get started. Isagi walks through the gates once they're open, and many follow him, running past him as he was walking pretty slow. Days later, the players go to the actual Blue Lock facility. Isagi doesn't really care about his possessions at all, but notice he was only number 265. Really? How lame. If there are that many people better than me, I'll handle them myself. Isagi walks into Team Z's room, looking around. He then noticed that he was the highest number, so he sits down and ignores Ego's message once he appears on the screen and goes to sleep for a bit. As time passes, Isagi is asleep until Monk kicked the ball into his stomach, seeing a free target. Isagi wakes up looking around, noticing the two second timer. Plenty of time. He then slams his foot into the ball without any wind up and then it hits the head of Monk as he had curved around Kunigami. Maybe that'll teach you not to mess with me. Isagi then closes his eyes and goes back to sleep as Igarashi is eliminated from the facility and has to go back to the temple. After Isagi is asleep for a while, he has a dream of when he was younger. He was playing a match with his local club team as he was the center of the attention. He kept the ball close and didn't pass at all. Each time he did get a pass at the half field mark, Isagi was already looking towards goal. He kept winning and winning. There was no effort at all though. This is when Isagi soon realized that no one really could compete with him, so he takes his skills elsewhere as he discovers something that truly piqued his interest. He began sneaking off from practices more and more to play an underground league, which was a 3v3 tournament. Isagi began to have more fun playing and adapting his own form of street ball and indoor soccer. Since he was much more focused on individualism, this was perfect for him. His parents would, of course, be mad at him for this, but they still forced him to play in junior high and high school. But... When he wasn't doing that, Isagi was playing street ball. But even he grew tiresome of this just because of how good he became at it, as his freestyle play style of soccer suited him the best. But he began to not have anyone who could even touch him in any form of this sport. So, he became bored of it and truly lost his flame, the ember that kept him so interested in football, the world of it. He still did enjoy watching players like Noel Noah, who scored like a robot, or that's how he described it. Yoichi Isagi had become empty. No matter how easily he won, he still wasn't happy with the way that he played the sport, as it just wasn't fun at all. Each game in high school, he at least scored four goals before getting bored and subbing himself out or even leaving the entire pitch. Even if the game was close, Isagi never worried, as it was all the same to him. Isagi wakes up in the blue lock room alone, as it was dark and he had his head down. Jinpachi Igo then appeared on the screen as some light would come in the room, asking if he would join his team in their training. Isagi then looks up. It doesn't matter how much anyone inside this place trains. The only one who can beat me is me. Make sure you don't forget that either. Isagi doesn't train at all with Team Z and ignores any message from Ego. His assistant then becomes curious why he lets only Yoichi Isagi do what he wants all the time. Well, Yoichi Isagi is a prodigy who could become useful to our project. I know you've heard of the term iron sharpens iron. Well, that's my analysis of Yoichi Isagi. The stronger opponents he faces, the stronger he may become, or the stronger he may make someone else. Although I've never seen any footage of Yoichi Isagi going all out while playing in any match. I've followed his streetball career for some time and his high school matches. He's astonishing when let loose, but he lacks the mindset to become the hero that Japan needs. His assistant then complains again, but Ego breaks it down to her. It's possible through Blue Lock that his own ego may be reformed or reawakened to the point where Yoichi Isagi becomes the best striker available to Japan for quite some time. Team Z was having a strategy meeting when Kunigami stepped out to go find Isagi. He looks around the facility for him and finds him inside the cafeteria, laying down on the table. Hey, Isagi, right? 
Want to join us for the strategy meeting? We do have a match coming up soon. He hears no answer and then walks closer to see that he was asleep, so he wakes him up. Isagi sits up angrily, asking what Kunigami wants. Wait, you remember my name? Anyway, we're deciding the position for the next match. Really? That's why you came to bother me? It's simple. I'll make the decision for you. I'll play striker and you do whatever you want. It's either I'll play striker or I won't play at all and you guys will play down a player. Kunigami asked what he meant by this, but Isagi just waved him off and laid back down. He would have to return relaying the message to Team Z as it seems they have no real choice and have to put their faith in Yoichi Isagi. But they can't deny how good he is, especially since Kira is still here to even vouch for him. The next day is when their match against Team X was about to begin as Yoichi Isagi isn't even in the locker room. They decided to play around this and hope he would show up and decide to put Kira as a striker. The match begins in the same way it did in the original with everyone crowding around the ball and then Baru coming out of nowhere to score. He slams the ball into the net declaring victory when someone else does step onto the pitch. Yoichi Isagi steps on yawning as he was so tired. Damn, you idiots are already down by one point. Well, give me the ball and I'll make us win. Isagi starts with the ball and dribbles forward alone. Come on, all of you make this enjoyable for me. Isagi then dribbles around Baru who tried to confront him and then the midfielders twisting and turning in all sorts of ways as no one could even predict his movements. He does so in and out faints with the ball as well comboed with step overs as he has consistent nutmegs to embarrass his opponents as he begins smiling in a way but his smile disappears as he steps into the goalkeeper's box and is surrounded blocking off his shot course. Team Z's players then run in asking for a pass as it seems he needs help as he soggy then gets serious. Why would I pass when I have them right where I want them? He lifts the ball into the air and performs a scissor kick scoring a goal as he lands on the ground gracefully. You simpletons are just too predictable. Isagi then walks back to his starting position getting glares and looks from everyone. Before he can even step into place, Baru himself would step in front of him. Hey idiot, what's the big deal? I'm the king of this field. Isagi and Baru then look in his eyes as they were about the same height and the two of them glare at each other. Baru had never seen such eyes in his life before not even when looking in the mirror. King, huh? Consider yourself dethroned. As of now, the world of soccer will bow down to my ideals, not your own. The match continues and Baru dribbles forward around Team Z's players, but has some difficulty when triple teamed. As soon as he gets range for a shot, the ball is stolen by Isagi. Wait, what? Why are you so far back? There's no point to a striker playing defense as well. Who said I was only going to play offense? I refuse to lose to someone as weak as you. Isagi dribbles forward, ducking in and out through his opponents as he gets to the halfway mark and he looks up towards the goal seeing how many defenders that he has. Still, not enough. He decides to make this interesting and dribbles himself all the way into a corner as Team Z questions why he did this so they begin running in the box hoping he would cross it. Isagi then pushes off his defenders and turns to where he could use his right foot I haven't shot from this angle in a while. I wonder how good it'll be. Kira then remembers exactly what it'll do. As Isagi slams his foot into the ball, going into the goal as it lands in the top corner, curving into it. Isagi has no reaction to this shot as well as he only turns to face Baru. If you truly believe yourself to be a king, get ready for war. Because I won't allow you to leave the pitch until I've broken that so-called will of yours. Every time throughout this match that Baru has the ball and tries to score, Izagi crushes him. He then begins to embarrass the so-called king by breaking his ankles constantly and shifting him off balance to where he falls. Izagi shows off his true skill and his shot prowess by hitting a knuckle shot, not even near the goal box. The match against the team would end 5-1 with Izagi having all five goals and leaving Baru in complete ruin. This defeat was something he had never tasted before. It was unlike anything he could ever imagine. He then looks to Isagi's jersey as he could only see the back of it, as the number that he saw when he walked away was number one. Isagi then turns to Baru, who was on his knees now frustrated as ever. Remember this, you disgraceful king. I'm the only person who could stand a chance against myself. 
Isagi goes to get some food since that's all he could really do in this facility as there was really nothing else. He was always bored every day since he doesn't train. Eventually, Isagi does use his highest rank status to retrieve a phone as he does engage in the outside world a little bit. Ego was seen reviewing the footage from that last game and was impressed. Yoichi Isagi, you truly are interesting. Scoring five goals while not even trying is no easy feat to accomplish. It's almost scary to imagine what you could do with the right mindset and proper training. But it also seems you already have your weapons pretty under control. You're ahead of many others here. Throughout the next couple of days, leading up to the next match, Team Z, well, they were trying to figure out how to get Isagi to work with them, as Isagi was only seen relaxing throughout the facility. Bachiro begins hanging around him, asking if he could teach him stuff and show him how to dribble like that. I don't play football the regular way that you're used to. I'm more of a street performer. I rely on my instincts. So if you want to learn something, just watch me play. Bachira nods and keeps following around Isagi, asking when he would train, but then realizes that Isagi doesn't train at all. Wait, why don't you train? There's no point for me to train. I'm already better than everyone here. You say that, yet you're in the bottom tier, on the bottom team. I like the way you think, Blondie. But if someone was better than me, I'd be able to sense it. Wait, really? I already told you before. It's my instinct. I can tell when their challenger would arise. Isagi turns to Batra, who then gets a glimpse of the monster that he was sensing inside Isagi. It's completely different from his own, as it resembles more of a panther than a human-like figure. It goes away quickly as Isagi nods, and Batra questions this, but Isagi had no idea what he was talking about. Isagi goes to sleep after having this conversation and is awoken by Team Z who tells him to suit up. Raichi and Kuon are the ones to yell at him as he punches both of them. You two are really loud, you know that? Isagi suits up and then says stay out of his way, but Kunigami puts his hand on his shoulder. You can trust us. We're your team. Team? I never needed one of those since I was an idiotic child. Isagi then walks out onto the pitch alone and then Team Z would arrive behind him to see Team Y. From what they could tell, it actually seemed that this would be a pretty even match. Well, except for the fact that they had Yoichi Isagi on their team, a complete monster. He starts with the ball and dribbles right into their opponent's territory. Let's do this. Isagi looks up seeing Iki Miko and his teammate Okawa guard him close. We've already studied your weapons and you're quite the player. Is that so? Isagi then dips his head and suddenly cuts right through the two of them with his speed. Not even stopping, he shoots the ball as it blasted into the back of the net with immense power and speed, shocking Team Y as they had thought they had them figured out. How boring. It looks like my senses are still too dull. You can't even bring out the real me. Isagi turns, stretching his neck just a little bit before the game continues. Nico and Okawa then pass back and forth as it leads to the ball being stolen by Kunigami, who passes it to Kira. He gets around the defender in front of him and then passes to Bachira in the middle. The young striker looks around as he sees two defenders, but then senses it, which causes him to pass to Yoichi Isagi, who was actually sitting down on the ground. Still, he trapped the ball perfectly with his feet and then stood up slowly. Isagi looks towards the goal and sees how many people were in front of him. Iki Niko comes out of nowhere jabbing at the ball to try to take it. You're still so foolish. Isagi nutmegs him and then shoots the ball as it curves into the near post giving him a second goal just that quickly. Team Y had no answers for this player. But it's not like Isagi was a team player either. Niko heads forward on his own on the next play. But Yoichi Isagi steps up to face him. Wait, he's going to play defense in this match as well? Before he can even think of what to do, He's knocked to the ground by Isagi's brute force, and the ball is stolen by him. You're weak. Isagi begins dribbling around this team, as many begin to notice his style. He does unnecessary moves in order to embarrass the opponent, and even drop them to the ground. Although, even with this, his expression remains the same, as if he was asleep while playing. Isagi then dribbles until he has five people guarding him in front of the goal. 
What's this? An iron wall? One of the players then rushes him, only to have Isagi flick the ball over his head as he performs an in and out into a Ronaldo chop, then to a quick elastico that makes the defense be on skate. Isagi then looks to the goalkeeper and fakes a shot, causing him to dive for the ball, as Isagi now slowly walks it into the back of the net, with both teams realizing he's in a completely different world of his own. Nico has no plan for this, as each time they try to get by Isagi at the midfield, he predicts their moves and steals the ball before they can even realize what happened to them. Isagi, well, he was a monster. Just what could he be doing and seeing that separates him from everyone else? The only person who could see it was Batra. That same flowing panther was active and around Isagi as it seemed it devoured every player that it came into contact with. So, that's your monster, Yoichi Isagi. Pretty badass. Isagi walked back, slowly looking at everyone, and then Kira walked towards him. You're pretty amazing, you know that? Pass to me. I'll be more useful than you think. Oh, really? How so? Kira begins convincing Isagi slowly. While the match continues, the two of them keep talking and don't even play at all, as Team Y is finally allowed to score. Yoichi Isagi then gets the ball back and sits with it for a moment. Alright, I'll test you out and see what you can do. He passes the ball, finally, to Kira, who smiles. Let's win then. Yoichi Isagi, Kira dribbles forward, ahead, and then passes to Kunigami as they perform a 1-2 pass and Kira looks up seeing Okawa and gets around him before passing back to Isagi. Now, with all four defenders around him, Isagi turns his back, seeing the ball, then float to him. That's how you plan to stop me? Isagi then jumps into the air, performing a bicycle kick that goes into the net. Team Y has no idea what to do, as five people just tried to guard him. He's just too good, but that doesn't make sense at all. Why would he be on the lowest part of Blue Lock if he was such a capable striker? It doesn't make sense. The match doesn't go well, as it would end 7-1 with all the goals being scored by Isagi, as they still couldn't get past him. After the match, Isagi is followed around the facility by Kira and Bachira, as the two wants to learn from him. Kira wants to learn how to become that dominant of a player, and Bachiro wants to learn how to dribble like that. Isagi eventually gets annoyed and decides to join a practice, but it was just the three of them. He sits down on the floor and tells them to show him what they were working on right now. Once he's seen what they can do, Isagi points out their flaws and what they should begin working on. It was actually pretty helpful in the end, as he left the pitch after and found somewhere to lay down. A day later, they would have a new match that they need to prepare for. Team Z has a serious meeting about Isagi and how they can get him to work with them. Kira says it might be possible, or it might be impossible, unless they primarily focus their offense around Isagi. Kunigami then points out how they're still in blue lock and they need goals as well. This causes everyone on Team Z to sort of distrust Isagi in a way and not want to pass him the ball. However, Kira had a realization as he wanted to continue playing with Isagi, no matter what. It was actually fun passing with him. If anyone would become Japan's best striker, it would be him. Kira himself just wanted to be there, not as a striker, but as support for Isagi as he began idolizing him in a way that Ness does for Kaiser. Isagi was seen leaning against the wall, looking towards the empty halls of the facility when Kira began walking towards him. Suddenly, a dimmer light begins to appear in the hallway as he tells Isagi that he has a plan and then he tells Isagi what Team Z plans to do, causing him to laugh. Really? They think not passing to me will have an effect on how many goals I score? Trust me, I've been playing football all my life, and I've seen it all. Isagi stands up, placing a hand on his shoulder. They fear me more than anything. He walks by Kira, but he's stopped by him. Let me help you become the world's best. So... You'd give up on your dreams to become a great striker for the success of me, for the sake of my success. How funny. You're pretty interesting, you know that? Kira nods, and then Isagi places a hand out. Serve me. 
For the sake of my goals then, Team Z is later seen walking onto the pitch where they now face Team W and the Wanima Twins. The Twins then start with the ball as they begin passing back and forth. Isagi and Kira shut them down before they even knew what hit them. As Kira passes the ball to Isagi, he dribbles through defenders, however both Twins seem to guard him now. Isagi then drops it back off to Kira as somehow they were perfectly in sync. Good pass, Isagi. Kira chips the ball then towards the goal, as Isagi has to jump for it, going for what seems like a bicycle kick. The Wanima twins prepare themselves for it and tip Isagi off balance, as this is when he turns his body smiling. I don't need to rely on a shot like that. As I already told you idiots, I'm the best. Isagi leans back, even further, surprising everyone, as they have no idea what he's doing. This unorthodox type of shot. Isagi then kicks the ball while performing a backflip as it goes into the back of the net. He lands a flip and walks over to Kira. You did that pass on purpose, you runt. Kira only smiles, saying he doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway, what was that shot you used? Is that one of the weapons Igo was talking about? Isagi then nods. Yeah, it's my formless shot. From that angle, I can shoot anywhere I want and no one can block it. Now, keep passing me the ball. Kira nods, and they reset the game. Team W does their best, but they can't even get past the midfield of Team Z without Isagi interfering with their plays. Isagi goes to pass to Kira, but Kuan and Raichi would go for the ball. We need to score as well, so we can't let you have all the fun. Isagi laughs and then dribbles around them, completely dropping them to the ground. Not bad for some low-life animals trying to enter my domain. Isagi then steps forward now with a serious expression, more than ever before. Let me remind everyone who I truly am. For a moment, Isagi taps into his true potential and uses his flow unlike any other as he moves around like a wild animal. His street ball movements added on to his immense speed and creativity make for some unrelenting combos that shake the defenders left and right and drop them to the ground. Isagi himself seemed to have fun in this moment doing this as he shoots with his left foot, scoring another goal. I'm Yoichi Isagi, the greatest footballer Japan could ever hope to have. Kira had watched on with amazement, almost trying to memorize that last play as Isagi did it all alone. No wonder no one can beat him. What he has isn't just luck. Or some sort of skill. I finally understand you now, Isagi. You were born with a God given talent. After scoring this goal, Ego, who was watching, made an interesting comment. So that's your true form, Yoichi Isagi. It seems to be that the flow state bends to your own will. Isagi's reawakened aura shows itself as we finally see the animal that he represents, a fierce predator like a jaguar. I know I said a panther before in the other part, but I'll switch it to a jaguar here who is a close relative and who I think fits better. Jinpachi Ego continues to watch this match as Isagi dominates, scoring goals with Kira being able to get the ball to him. As after the match is when Team Z confronts Kira on why he helped Isagi so much. I don't have to explain myself to you, Isagi will become the best, and I'll see to it. After this match, Isagi walks around the facility and goes to grab some food. As he was in line, someone skipped him. Isagi looks at the player and smiled. Stay out of my way, runt. Isagi pushes the player, causing two others to confront him. Hey, keep your hands off of Nagi. Isagi then pushes Ryo away as well, with Zantetsu grabbing him on his shoulder. Wait a minute. This guy... He's insanely strong. Isagi pushes both of them off of him and gets his food. How annoying. Ryo begins yelling and Zantetsu tells him who that is. That's the player on Team Z who has more goals than even Nagi. But what's a player like that doing on the worst team? Isagi eats his food alone until those three sit right in front of him. Ryo asked him how many goals he had and he scored in the last match and Isagi ignored him. He kept asking questions, but Isagi just eats his food. This is when Kira enters the cafeteria and sits with them. There you are, Isagi. Who are they? Hell if I know. 
Kira then tells them that they need to get some rest for the next match, and Ryo comments how they're playing each other, making Kira smile. Well then, it's decided. Our next victory will be against your team. Isagi agrees and stands up. Let's go, Runt. I want to sleep somewhere that no one can bother me. Isagi wakes up the next day with Kira, waiting for him to get ready. They step into the locker room of Team Z, getting glares but pay it no mind. Raichi calls Kira a coward for the way he plays, causing Isagi to slam his face into a locker. Keep your mouth shut and play defense. That's all you're good for and that's all you need to do. Isagi steps onto the pitch first with Kira right behind him, and then Team Z follows. So, you think you can handle them too? Doubt me again, and I'll get rid of you. Kira nods as a match would start, and Ryo passes to Zantetsu. He tries to run by Isagi, but the taller player guarded him close. Speed, huh? What a speed, without a great control to go with it. Isagi jabs at the ball, sending it right to Kira, who was in the midfield. Ryo was guarding him close, but Kira actually gets around him with quick dribble moves that shocks Ryo. I can almost see the goal that Isagi wishes to have. Kira then dodges the next player that comes for him, leading to a pass right back to Isagi, having the ball. Our protagonist receives it, without even looking at it, and then scores off a of volley. Nagi looks at Ryo, saying that they should try that as well, as they would try to copy the very same play, only for Isagi to get in the way. He clears the ball with a header and gets it to Kunigami. He steps forward only to have Zantetsu guard him close. Before he could think of what to do, the ball was stolen by Kira, who had no presence on the field at all. That's it, Hiro. Now, Isagi. He passes the ball towards goal and Isagi speeds right by them. Zantetsu was especially shocked because his weapon was speed. Yet, it seemed Isagi was much faster. Isagi goes in using a Ronaldo chop into a heel flick that gets him right open as Ryo quickly cuts right in front of him, blocking off his right foot shot. I've got you now. But Isagi guards the ball and turns his body, shooting with his left, which had the exact same amount of power. Seeing this, Jinpachi Igo now understood that Yoichi Isagi was just like Noel Noah, just lazy. Isagi then stood back up, looking to Ryo. What? Don't look so shocked. Actually thinking you could stop me from scoring is stupid. Don't ever let that idiotic thought cross your mind again. The game resets as now Team V was trailing by two points. Ryo starts with the ball, but Isagi runs in, guarding him close, causing him to panic. Nagi seeing this, for the first time, decides to move in order to win. Ryo passes in the direction of Nagi who traps it and completely destroys Bachira and Kira. He then speeds forward past Raichi and Kuon who try to guard him close. Hey Zantetsu. He passes to his right and Zantetsu goes in scoring the first goal. Great pass Nagi. Isagi watching this smile. That's it. He gets the ball and resets the game dribbling forward slowly. Nagi and Ryo guard him but can't even take the ball from him. Isagi protected it perfectly and then suddenly smiled before bursting forward with speed that shocked everyone. Isagi flicked the ball up and performed his formless shot as he scores his third goal of the match landing the flip, telling Team V that they stand no chance at all. Ryo and Nagi still try their best and begin passing back and forth to try and overwhelm Team Z. However, each time they get close to scoring, either Isagi or Kira or even both would stop them. In this match, Nagi does awaken, but even that isn't enough to close the gap between the two players. After their defeat, Isagi looks down at Nagi. The talent you have can only go so far alone. Unlike me, you have to train to become stronger. Isagi walks off, as now, the players begin training for who knows what. Isagi himself still doesn't train and finds it all to be pointless. Well, for himself at least but instead he helps Kira become stronger since it will gain him even more goals in the future than he currently has. Kira's first weapon that he does gain is his own version of spatial awareness, but unlike Isagi's from the original, his, alongside his direct passes, awards goals to Isagi, not himself, as he still has to find out what his offensive weapon could be. After this training is when Team Z finally walks into another room seeing a whole bunch of players. 
Jinpachi Ego then explains what Blue Lock's first selection truly was, and how they would now begin the second selection. Before he could explain it, Yoichi Isagi had already entered the first stage of it. He was walking down the hallway, looking bored as ever, wanting to go to sleep, but ends up in a large room with only a goal. This is when a goalkeeper appears to him, and the ball shoots directly from a wall, causing Isagi's reaction, well, to begin, as he reacted quickly and then scored with no effort at all. That's it? How boring. Jinpachi Ego was in the main surveillance room watching everyone progress, and then realized soon that Yoichi Isagi hadn't missed a single goal yet. Wait, that can't be possible. No. His assistant then questions his reaction, as she would look at the screen as well to see Isagi performing shots that curve right into the goal. Minutes later, Isagi walked out the same time as another player, Itoshi Rin. Both have the same thought, as this was a challenge that had appeared to them. Isagi and Rin decide not to speak and wait on someone else to appear, as eventually they do. Soon, even Kira makes it out, causing Isagi to now stand up. Alright, let's go. Isagi grabs Kira for his team, as well as Nagi, who left Ryo wanting to play with him. They decide to go into the next room, seeing Rin, Tokimitsu, and Aryu. Alright, seems you three are ready as well. Let's play. They would waste no time and get to their first match on the pitch. Isagi's team starts with the ball, and they head forward right into the defense. Ren doesn't guard him, so it makes it much easier for him just to get around both players and score an easy goal. Looking back at him, Ren wasn't amused, since he could do the same as well. He places the ball back in the middle and then shoots from there. As soon as he lifts the ball off of his foot, the head of Isagi blocks it and the ball bounces to Nagi. Nagi heads forward on his own, mimicking the movements of Isagi, and so Kira would steal the ball. Thanks, Nagi. He then uses Nagi as a shield to block Tokimitsu's view and sends the ball in the box for Isagi. Good pass, Runt. Aryu would jump with him, but Isagi then turns his body, getting in front of him, using a scissor kick to score a goal, as now it was 2-0. Isagi looks back at Ren. Don't tell me you think you can actually beat me. Whatever. You're still lukewarm. Am I now? If I'm lukewarm, I guess you're not even in the water yet. Ren resets the ball and tries to dribble around Isagi. Wait, why can't I get around him? Is he actually that good? Isagi keeps guarding Ren with ease until Kira comes from a blind spot and steals the ball again. Wait a minute, when did he even get there? Kira turns with the ball as we now see his eyes. So, this is spatial awareness. Alright, let's finish this Isagi. Ren runs, chasing after Isagi who moved forward as the ball would then float to him from a pass from Kira. Isagi traps it before turning his body, spinning around Ren as he has to cut back looking around. You're too slow. Isagi then shoots with his left foot, scoring an amazing goal. Well, looks like we only need two more. Ren becomes aggravated and instantly shoots from the beginning once again, only to be stopped from Nagi, who traps it. Nice try, genius. Now then, since they won't pass to me, and Ryo isn't here, I'll make my own luck. Nagi dribbles forward, using his traps to get around anyone who comes at him. Kira and Tokimitsu can't even steal it from him, since he was so unpredictable, and Isagi didn't care enough. He actually kind of wanted to watch Nagi's evolution right in front of his eyes, as he would score another wonder goal. Nagi then clenches his fist in excitement, but now Ren is agitated even further. All of you are just insects in my way, and I'll destroy all of you. Ren would dash forward, controlling the ball perfectly, as he attacks Nagi and Kira first. He dances around them, making them look foolish while trying to guard him. Even though they had leveled up, Ren was still in a class of his own that they haven't reached just yet. Ren then looks up, seeing the open goal. However, he could sense it. He quickly turns his head, seeing that Yoichi Isagi was right behind him, and then sent the ball flying. Too bad, you're a damn brat. With skill like that, you may be even more fun to toy with than I imagined. Isagi then dashes forward towards the ball, but first, Tokimitsu gets to it and kicks it into the goal. Isagi begins laughing at the fact that he scored, but then he has to get the final two goals of this match, which happened with ease. Isagi then looks down at the defeated team 
and decides to take Tokimitsu as their fourth player. Since you scored, you might be useful. Just play defense and get me the ball. Tokimitsu nods and walks off behind him as he asks what kind of training they will be doing, but Isagi says that he won't be training. As soon as they make it to the next setting, Isagi goes to sleep, and for the following days he continues to do so, as during this time is when Kiro develops his spatial awareness even further, as well as his direct pass, to become a better passer for Isagi, as he's able to do so with Nagi and Tokimitsu helping during his training, which actually helps them a lot as well. During one of the days, they were approached by a familiar face. It was Rin. Tell that lucky bastard, I'm ready for a rematch. All three of the players nod, wondering what Isagi has been up to. Surprisingly, we see him meditating instead of sleeping. It's almost like a predator at rest in a jungle, awaiting the next challenge. The dark room he was in was soon illuminated by Kira opening the door. You ready, Isagi? It's time for you to score more goals for me. Isagi's eyes remained closed as he took a deep breath. The world of football bends to my will alone. Through football and my skill, I'll conquer it all and become the best. As the only person who could ever hope to defeat me is me. This is when we get a short time skip into the next match as we see everyone standing around on the pitch, ready to play. Isagi's team wore black jerseys as their members were Isagi, Kira, Nagi, and Tokimitsu, while Ren's team wore white, and their members were Ren, Aryu, Bachira, and Baru. Isagi stood with the ball, looking on intensely towards them. Hey Kira, how did your training go? It went well, Isagi. I'm ready for this. Alright, Runt, keep up with me then. I'm gonna let loose a little bit in this match. Isagi takes a step forward only for Baru to be the first to guard him. It's payback time. Who are you again? Isagi dribbles right through him with stepovers into a quick directional turn. Before Bachira can even move, Isagi gives the ball to Kira who looks up. I can't let him leave me in the dust like that. Kira heads forward to have only Bachira guard him. It's good to see you again, Bachira. Yeah, it is. But how does it feel being a dog for Isagi? Kira then lowers his head and bursts it forward with speed while megging Batra. It's pretty good actually. I haven't lost since. He kicks the ball towards Isagi, who had his back to the goal. He was protecting the pass from Ren, Baru, and Aryu all at the same time. Somehow, he was still able to protect it very well, shocking everyone. But there was no way he could score from this angle, which is what he would hear them say. Isagi then watched the ball roll towards him as he smirked. Kira began laughing seeing this as well. Go ahead and score a magnificent goal, Yoichi Isagi. Bacha returns to Kira and then to Isagi, who flicks the ball over their heads before cutting right through them with his strength. Isagi then jumped towards the ball and hit a volley before they could even recover. That's one for us, you simpletons. All the players on Team White were now aware of how good Isagi could truly be if he tried. Ren then looks around after getting the ball and surprisingly passes to Baru as both of them would use each other to devour and get forward onto the pitch. This would shock players on Isagi's team, but these two have a quick 1-2 passes that leave their opponents in the dust. Rin himself is able to dribble around Kira and Tokimitsu, but Tokimitsu recovers and stops his shot, forcing Rin to pass to Baru who had an open area. The pass would bounce towards the king, only to be stopped by Nagi who came out of nowhere. Huh, what a cool play. But you jerks on the only one who've been training. Nagi dribbles forward with immense speed, heading into the opponent's half, as he does quick in and out cuts to get himself open, alongside flicking the ball up and using his traps to his advantage, as he would now flick the ball up into the air going for a shot, but Bachira stops it from even happening. But he's devoured by Nagi's new moves, as Kira then points something out to Ren. Looks like the score is 2 to 0. Ren looks back to see that the ball was now mid-air, and Isagi came out of nowhere, kicking it into the goal. Not a bad move at all, Nagi. But remember, towards goal, and in this box, is my domain alone. Whatever. I'll get the next one. That's the spirit. Keep trying. Baru then starts with the ball this time and drops it off to Bachira. This was a mistake, as a blue-haired blur dashes right by him. Wait. 
What the? Isagi steals it from Bachiro with quick speed, as now he sees his monster again. Isagi dribbles around Aryu and was now open for the shot. Not so fast. Rina seen body blocking it and cutting off both angles. I've got you now, Isagi. Do you really? Isagi then flicks the ball up, shocking all of them by passing to someone else. That being Kira. His eyes were now active as his body was moving on instinct. I don't have an insane left foot like Isagi and the ball is coming to my left foot. What can I do? I have to do something. Isagi's now open for a pass. Wait, he passed to me because he wants me to score. This is when Kira's full evolution would start to begin slowly. So this is the realm of a striker. Ren turned just in time, just to be able to see what happened, as it even shocked Isagi. Kira lifted his leg and shot the ball with the outside of his right foot, as this made it curve, and it goes right over Ren and Isagi into the goal. Kira clenched his fist, walking over to Isagi, as the two of them would high five. Nice shot, Runt. I guess that training really did pay off. Next time when you shoot, though, do it like this. Isagi corrects his movements and Kira takes note of it all. The game then resets as they just need two more points and they can move on. Ren then begins to evolve because he doesn't want to lose again and so does Baru. While this happens, the thought of being left behind awakens Bachira's true ego as all three of these players sync up and devour on the pitch. The ball goes from Ren causing destruction to Baru ripping through the defense to now Batra obliterating their ankles with his dribble moves. It all leads back to Ren, who scores their first goal of the match, as this was a declaration to Yoichi Isagi. The three of them celebrated this goal, but Isagi hadn't moved from his starting position at all. He was still with his eyes closed. Jinpachi Iga was watching from the room, questioning this as well. Isagi then opened his eyes, now in the flow state. What a destructive trio. That goal... It amused me a little bit, so why not score my own? Isagi gets the ball and looks up. The rest of you stay back. I'll win this alone. Isagi heads forward. First, to Bachira, who can't even see his moves. Even though he does try to steal the ball, Isagi flicks it off, and he body blocks him, sending him to the ground. With one Ronaldo chop, he now gets by smiling. This is almost a challenge. Rin and Baru step to face him, but Isagi had other plans. He takes one final step, and instantly his stance would change, as he quickly shoots the ball. It goes into the goal before anyone could even react. Huh? Oh, that's right. I almost forgot I could do that. All the players on the pitch then wondered what that was, but Ego would have to point out to himself that that shot goes against everything in the fundamentals of football. It had no form nor buildup. Yet it was that powerful. Isagi then claims that the real match has just begun. And he goes on to beat Ren's team once again. As after finishing, he claimed to be tired and says that Kira can choose their final teammate. He looks around and decides to go with Bachira. Since he thinks he could get Isagi open as well. All of them then walk behind Isagi as he enters another dark room. Jinpachi Ego then appears on the screen with a devilish smile. And states, Now, as a reward for your success, I'll tell you how luck works in the world of football. As he begins to explain luck, Yoichi Isagi sits down and goes to sleep as he doesn't even hear the announcement made about the World 5 match. Well, even if he is asleep, I'm sure this match will interest him. Yoichi Isagi is the definition of luck as he was born with gifts that can only be comparable to that of Noel Noah. Isagi wakes up, a day later, still in this room's sleep. Man, how long was I out? Long enough, Yoichi Isagi. Ego then appears on the screen smiling. Tell me, do you believe you are the best striker in Japan? No, I don't. I'm the best in the world. Is that so? What about Noel Noah, or better yet, even strikers who are younger like you, Julian Loki? Yet... They're already on a team. Isagi sighs. You need to remember your place. I chose to come here instead of joining Japan's club teams or going somewhere else that has offered me. And Julian Loki? Hmm. 
I remember him. He's a small fry when compared to me. Isagi then exits the room and finds his own where he can go to sleep. As he does this for the next day or so while his team trains to perfect their own weapons. As soon match day does arrive and Isagi suits up with the rest of his team. Well, let's see what the world has to offer me now. They walk out seeing the world 5 team and instantly when seeing Julian Loki, Isagi sighs as he would walk over to him. Yo, Isagi. What do you want now, Mr. Big Shot? Come on, don't be like that, man. You could have been playing for France with me if you took the club's offer. Yeah, but why would I? Yeah, I know, it's not your style at all. Anyway, it seems you chose to come here. Why is that? I can't tell you, even myself. It beats living at home. With my crazy parents, anyway. Loki laughs at this, saying Isagi was still the same after all this time. But, just how good have you become while here? Isagi smirks. I'm the same as ever. And you should know, that means better than you. Isagi then sets up the ball, and the rest of the World 5 players would ask about Isagi and Loki's history, but the match would begin. Isagi dribbles forward, getting around Cabasos and Silva with ease, before shooting and scoring in an instant. That's one. Loki then states to Luna that Yoichi Isagi could have been a part of the Generation 11 if he had chosen to. So, we're dealing with a player that's that good. Luna then starts with the ball and passes to Loki, who dribbles by Nagi and Bachira. He then sees Isagi in front of him and asks him if this was okay, right before he showed off his godlike speed talent. But, Kiro would reach for the ball in that same moment, as Loki has to cut back and forth, continuing to burst with speed, avoiding it. But he doesn't even get by Isagi. Isagi stays with Loki, being able to stop the shot, but he still ties the game. Not bad at all, Loki. Seems like you still rely on your speed the most. You could say that, but your speed isn't anything to take lightly. But if we both got serious here, there's no telling which one of us would win. Isagi then turns to him. Are you challenging me again, Loki? It seems that way. Both of them without question tap into their respective flow-like states. A cheetah and a jaguar, like Aura, would surround the two of them as they prepare to clash. Isagi then dribbles forward with Loki guarding him. Just like old times, it seems. Isagi then performs stepovers one by one and then spins, getting, well, right around Loki. But due to his speed, he's able to recover and keep up. Data Silva tries to get in the way as he's bored watching, but the two of them maneuver around him as if he wasn't there. What the? Isagi and Loki seem to be having fun as doing this, as it seemed like these two were the only ones on the field. These two prodigies even shocked Jinpachi Ego. Don't tell me that Yoichi Isagi is better than Julian Loki. Isagi breaks his ankles and gets open for the shot, but Luna helps him out, stopping it, setting the ball flying. You're pretty dangerous, kid. We can't let you walk all over us like that. As the World 5 would capitalize on this, scoring a goal, going up by one. Isagi then stood back up sighing. You know, it's been a while since I got this excited to play football. So this is the power of the World 5. I'll have to thank Jinpachi Ego for bringing me more ants to crush below my feet. Isagi received the ball from Kira and turned, having Kabasos guard him. Kabasos then looks up as he sees a completely different player. This was the true Yoichi Isagi. He gets right by before Kabasos can even react. Wait a minute, how did he... Isagi then looks up, seeing Adam Blake guard him close. Really? You think you can keep up now? Don't make me laugh. Isagi goes to shoot, but Data Silva blocks off the angle. Well, let's even the playing field then. Isagi then fakes the shot, and passes to Kira. This shocks everyone, but Kira is able to predict and run by these players. Loki then steps in front of him, but he sends the ball to Bashra, who quickly passes to Isagi, sensing the monster within him. This is where he hits another scissor kick-like shot, as this would tie the score, causing the World 5 to work together even further, as all of them would tap into a somewhat like flow state, as they begin to overwhelm Isagi's team, but not without him scoring another goal, making the final score 5 to 3. Isagi was standing up while the World 5 seemed to be exhausted from taking him on. Sure, they won the game, but 
but they didn't beat Yoichi Isagi, who stood tall with a serious expression. So this is the world of football. It's pretty fun. So wait on me to get there and destroy you all in a real match. Loki then calls Isagi a monster and that he hasn't changed at all. The next time we play, Yoichi Isagi, I'll defeat you with my skills alone. Yeah, whatever, you goddamn annoying footballer. Isagi then exits, following his team into another room. They get to rest for a little bit, but for the next couple of days, they have to study different languages, mainly English. Isagi already knows some of it because of the teams that he's played on, so it isn't hard for him to pick it up. Another thing the players begin to notice is that Isagi sneaks off to somewhat train in secret or at least practice some of his moves. They would interrupt him sometimes, causing him to say and act as if he wasn't training. But he gives in and begins training with them as well, as the World 5 match had given him a new light, a new drive to become better at football, to truly gain his spot as the best. But first he has to become the best in Japan which won't be hard for him at all, as he'll soon get a chance. Their team would soon enter a dark room where many more teams begin to appear. After everyone makes it in, Jinpachi Ego appears onto a screen. So, it seems all of you had a great time in the World 5 match. Now, an even greater test has come for you unpolished gems. The U20 Japan team has challenged us to a match. So tell me, will you rise into action? Or will you allow your ego to be devoured? Isagi yawns after this statement and then looks around. The U20 Japan team will lose without me playing for them. Jinpachi Ego then shows Itoshi Sei on the screen, making Isagi smirk. Well now, you do have my interest, but that pampered house cat couldn't keep up with me if he tried. Ego continues his speech. And he goes on to say that Blue Lock's team will be focused around these six strikers. Yoichi Isagi, Ryusei Shido, Itoshi Rin, Shoei Baru, Kenyu Yukimiya, and Seishiro Nagi. These are the six players who managed to score against the World 5. The teams A, B, and C appear on the screen, while the rest of the players have to choose which duo to join. Isagi goes off to sleep, finding this part of the selection to be pretty boring. As he was sleeping, Shido comes into the room and tries to attack him. Isagi then wakes up, sensing it and dodging a kick. He then punches Shido in the face before slamming him into the ground. Nice to meet you too. Looks like you're pretty strong. Shido then tries to loosen himself up, but Isagi then steps on his ankle, spraining it. Shido yells in pain before being left in the room by Isagi. Try that again, and next time I'll break it. The next day, when the first match is announced, Team A1 versus B1. The players on Team A1 are Isagi, Shido, Nanase, Hayori, and Kira. The players on Team B1 are Ren, Baru, Chiguri, Bachira, and Raichi. The teams head onto the pitch. For the match to score five goals with Isagi looking back at his team. Seems all of you can suit my needs. Kira, take those two and use them to support me. Right. The match then starts with Shido having the ball, but he's bodied off of it and sent to the ground by Isagi right onto his ankle. This adds to the damage and has him sit out for the rest of the games. He curses Isagi for this, but Isagi can only smile. I'll be fine without him. He resets the ball and the game continues. He dribbles forward, with Ren and Baru guarding him. You know, I had a feeling that you two could score against Loki. But, let's make one thing clear. Isagi shoots, scoring the first goal. Truly, the outcome of the matches remains the same, with Isagi continuously leading his team to victory. I don't really care. For the U20 preparation arc too much, so I'll end it here, as we'll get right into what you guys are truly here for. After all, Jinpachi Ego calls everyone into a room and goes over the starting lineup. It remains the same with just a few changes, 
as instead of Otoya on the right wing, we have Kira, and also just switch Isagi and Rin's positions for the starting lineup. Match day then arrives, and the players of Blue Lock are seen suiting up in the locker room. However, they notice Isagi, their striker, isn't there at all. This is when we see Baru enter the room and he relays the message that Isagi decided to take a nap. Ego's assistant is currently trying to find him in the facility, so they'll have a change of plans for now. Kira sighs, saying it'll be fine, as long as Baru and Ren can score the goals for them. They would all nod, agreeing with this statement, heading out onto the pitch, as the perspective would switch to that of Ren for the beginning of this match. He focuses on his elder brother, knowing that he needs to beat him here in order to earn his respect. The match does begin with Ren, Baru, and Nagi going on the attack. All three of them would create a triangle that can't be broken by the defense of the U20 players. However, as it seemed that Baru was about to shoot, Oliver Aiku would steal the ball while smiling. So this is blue lock. Not bad at all. But we have our own weapons as well. He then sends the ball up to Itoshi Sei, who traps it before breaking through Karasu and Yukimiya. Alright, let's see what you can do now. He passes it to Sendo, who then shoots and misses the goal. Gagamaru is able to only punch it out, only for Sei to get the ball once again. Iki Niko tries to defend, but it curves around him and into the goal. The crowd goes wild for Japan's golden child, but Bulak seems not that agitated by it, as Baru states to Aiku that he won't stop him the next time. In your dreams, you egoist. The match then reset and Ren passes to Yukimiya. Well, it seems we need to try something a little different here. He dribbles forward before performing a backheel pass to Bachira. Yeah, so let's get the next one. Bachira dribbles through his defenders using Isagi in a way for his new move and style. His new style of destructive dribbling was amazing and got him into free space. Well, there's only one thing to do now. He then sends the ball towards goal, with Aiku being ready to block his path. But then, Nagi Seishiro appears out of nowhere, mid-air trapping it and scoring a goal. The crowd goes insane for Blue Lock's white-haired prodigy, and the players surrounding him as well. Nice pass, Bachira. The two nod to one another, with the U20 team realizing how serious that they do need to take Blue Lock here. They were just high schoolers, but these teens were playing football at the highest level to be able to compete like this. Aiku then picks up the ball and turns to Itoshi Sei. What do you think of them? They're just ants, waiting to be crushed by someone stronger. I still see no hope for Japan anywhere on this field. The game then resumes after this astonishing goal from Seishiro Nagi, with Sendo passing the ball back to Sei. He looks up and heads forward, being confronted by Rin. Hello there, big brother. Rin jabs towards the ball only for Sei to dribble right around him, but it actually stuns Sei that Rin was able to react accordingly and continue to keep moving. Don't think you'll get rid of me so easily. You're still so childish after all this time. You know that? Sei turns up the pressure by spinning around his younger brother and then sprinting forward. The blue lock 11's defense then starts to crash on him, but it's too late as he chips the ball over their heads to Sendo, who was now one-on-one -on -one with Gagamaru. The U-20 striker then stands up, focusing everything into this next shot as he swings his left leg with force behind it, scoring their second goal of the match. The average striker would celebrate the goal as now there were only a couple more minutes until the break. But this is where we cut over to Ego's assistant, walking over throughout the facility, trying to find Yoichi Isagi. He was sitting down eating while on his phone that he bought back while in the facility. She then walks over, exhausted, beginning to yell at him. Chill out, you're so loud. Anyway, they should be able to win without me. As he says this, he looks on his phone to see that the score of the match, they were down by one goal, going into the half. Isagi sighs, saying this shouldn't be hard for him to fix, and sits up. Call him right now. And recalls Ego, as it was basically a FaceTime call. And Ego asked, well, Isagi asked Ego, 
So, Ego, what will I get if I come to play? Well, considering the type of person you are, there's only one thing you could want, and that's freedom. Isagi then smiles and asks if they had a deal, and Jinpachi Ego would nod. Blue Lock's players were then seen in the locker room strategizing when Isagi walked in, putting on his jersey, not saying a word. Fits pretty good. Listen up, losers. Get me the ball, and I'll do the rest for you guys. Baru stands up, grabbing him by the collar, only for Isagi to punch him. Like I said, get me the ball and stay out of my way. Baru, you're out. Ren, go to offensive midfielder. Anyway, I'm going to play striker. The rest of you play how you want to stay out of my way. Yo, run. You ready? Kira looks up nodding and then jumping up, excited to see Isagi once again. As their eyes would lock, with Isagi smiling as well. In this match, you'll have to evolve into what I want you to. So, just follow my lead. He drops Kira to the ground, and they head onto the pitch as the announcers then make their comments. It seems Blue Lock has added a new striker to their lineup. Wait, I'm getting word that it's Yoichi Isagi, the prodigy that was fated to save Japan. Isagi walks out and the crowd goes wild seeing him. As this is when he walks over to Itoshi Sei. It's been a while, hasn't it, Sei? So, you decide to play. I'm surprised you're not somewhere sleeping. I was. But then I was told the great Itoshi Sei would be in this match. So I guess I couldn't miss it. Whatever. Try not to fall asleep while you play. Of course. I'll make sure to sign your cleats after this match. Sei would scoff and then walks away as Sendo would set up the ball. He passed to Sei, but he did so lightly, and a blue blur would go right by him as Isagi appeared right in front of him. Ego then sits back in his chair and puts his palms together. So it begins. Sei then steps forward, but he senses something is off about Yoichi Isagi this time. He hadn't seen him since he had left for Spain, but during that time, they were sort of equals in a way. But now, Isagi was a little different. Before he could even realize it, Isagi had stole the ball. He then dribbled through and went towards goal, passing it to Kira on his right. The winger on the U20 team would attempt to steal it early on, but was embarrassed by Kira, who decided to show off his skills. He dribbled sort of like Isagi in a way, but it's combined with his own unique style. After getting by, he then looks up towards goal. So, there you are, Isagi. Go on and tell the world who will become the next number one. He hits the ball, where it will recur right into the box for Isagi who jumped with IQ. So, you're the last hope. Sorry to ruin your chances, but you can't score from here. Isagi then traps the ball and brings it down, before dribbling himself into a corner. He then shoots, where it curves right into the goal. I guess I couldn't score from there either. Well, as the captain for the U20 team, I'll have to commend you for that goal. But it'll take more than that to beat us. I'm sure it will. Isagi casually walks back to his own starting position, with Sei going to Aiku. That striker is Yoichi Isagi. Yeah, I heard his name before. Well, I think I did. Well, I want you to know, he could have been a part of the Generation 11 if he wasn't so lazy. But, don't take him lightly here. Great, another prodigy on our hands. The two look at Isagi, who was surrounded by the players in Blue Lock who were celebrating that goal. Jinpachi Ego would sigh before sitting back. It seems the fate of Blue Lock relies only on the hands of Yoichi Isagi now, our greatest weapon. The other players would ask why, and Ego reminds them of the flow state. They remember it clearly from his explanation, but he leaves them astonished as he would say, Yoichi Isagi commands that state whenever he pleases. They would look back down to see Isagi with immense focus upon his face. So that's the flow state. Not bad at all. Isagi then looks to Kira and points to Sendo. As soon as the game begins, the two dash forward and Sei actually passes the Cho on the outside with Yukimiya guarding him close. But he cuts off the pass back to Sei as this is what forces him to drop it back and they have to reset with the defense. The U20 take it up onto another level and begin one-touch passing around the field 
looking for any opening. They mess up by sending a long ball to Sendo, who is somehow open. These idiotic kids don't know the first thing about football. Sendo prepares to volley, only to have the pass intercepted by Kira and his body blocked off by Nico. Capture complete. Now go, Kira. Of course. Good working with you. Nico would nod, continuing to body Sendo off the ball, with Kira setting the ball up to Nagi who traps it with a defender behind him. How annoying. Back to you. Karasu gets a pass and goes around the two before continuing forward. He sees Sei incoming and he sends it into space where Shiguri would run to get it. And we can pause here for just a second and address Team Z. Even though they went without the original Yoichi Isagi for most of the second selection and a little bit of the first, they had their own evolutions to make them gain their weapons. So back to the match. Shiguri gets the ball and looks towards the box for a cross. He then sees Aiku in a defensive position, ready, but he also looks to Isagi. Chiguri then remembers that this is still blue lock and decides to just go for it and attempts to shoot as this will be his earliest form of his 44 panther shot. However, it's stopped by Isagi who rips it out of the sky before performing a scissor kick to give them a lead for the first time in this match. What? Don't tell me you losers don't get it yet. I'm the best. And the only person who can beat me is me. Aiku scoffs, calling him a hotshot, but Isagi doesn't even notice. The U20 team would try to get Isagi, but even Say himself can't realize what makes him so great, especially at this point, as he would soon realize that Isagi is the striker he's been looking for. But what brought this mentality out of him? Was it a place like Blue Lock? What could have happened to him when he was gone? Isagi goes back and forth with Kira and ends up scoring the last goal of this match as well, leaving the score 4 to 2. As Isagi does get an interview and he's asked what's next, but even he doesn't know. However, he does declare himself to be on the route to be. No, he changed his mind. He is the next number one striker in the world. Jinpachi Igo is later greeted by Isagi, who heads away for Blue Lock for a while. As on the outside world, many clubs begin reaching out to him, even PXG's team, with a special message from Loki himself. However, Isagi ignores all of this, and he goes to a place where it all began. He heads to the underground streetball arena. As he heads in, he notices the regulars, but then there is this one guy that stands out to him. He doesn't look Japanese at all. He dribbled around people on the small pitch and made them look like idiots. It's as if they were dancing and Isagi thought about joining himself. But he got a text from Jinpachi Ego about the Neo Egoist League. As this makes him journey back home. As he said he'd return to Blue Lock within just a couple days. When he does return home, his parents sort of resent him in a way for going to Blue Lock. But they can't even deny its results in his playstyle as it seems that fire was back within him. As in the U20 match, Isagi's passion was there. There was no denying it. He ignores their lectures about club teams wanting him to play for them and then says that he's returning to Blue Lock. Isagi decides that this is the route that he wants to take in order to claim his spot as the world's number one. Isagi returns to Blue Lock and then notices that the U20 players are there as well. Ego appears on the screen and relays the message of Blue Lock's next project, the Neo Egoist League. He explains the teams and the nations that they could play for, but leaves the decision for themselves. Pick the environment that best suits me, huh? That's pretty simple after all. Kira then comes up to Isagi, who smiles. You ready, Rut? Yeah, let's go to Spain. Isagi nods and the two head to that part of the facility with Bachira going with them as well, and Otoya as they would walk in to see a shirtless Levine ho. Isagi doesn't even let him speak as he walks right up to him. I saw you playing in the underground tournament a couple days ago. Yeah, I was there having some fun. But if you know about that place, you must be exceptional in some way or you just really like football. No, I'm just the best. Levine ho laughs in the face of Isagi 
and then throws his glasses to the ground. I like you, kid. You'll fit well here in Spain. But, listen here. I'm not teaching anyone anything. Lavinho begins juggling the ball with ease, explaining how he became the best, and what Spain is truly about. But this is when Isagi stole the ball from him and began smiling. No, don't listen to this idiotic master. What he really means is Spain is our gateway to freedom when playing football. Lavinho then smiles, telling the Barcha team to get ready, as this is going to be interesting with this guy here. A day passes and Isaki is seen following Lavinho around. Let's play in a match, one on one. Lavinho smirks. Are you sure you can handle that, kid? Yeah, now let's get started. However, Lavinho takes Isagi to a smaller pitch made out of only sand. Let's see how well you play in this. Isagi takes his shirt off and begins stepping on the sand, realizing the big difference that he makes. He then noticed that Lavinho didn't even have his shoes on, so Isagi took his off as well. He starts with the ball and Lavinho dashes forward. He dribbles perfectly on the sand allowing his feet to sink in as he used it to his advantage. He dances around Isagi, and for the first time in a while, Isagi drops to the ground and his back will be left on the sand. Lavinho then scores and mocks Isagi while on the ground. He sits up anger, turning back to him. Who the hell said I was done just yet? We then go over to Batra and Kira, who were trained together. Batra had already talked to Lavinho, and began trying to upgrade his monster, while Kira seemed to be taking a different approach. He needs a better weapon to help Isagi, something that completely changed the game. Kira continues to practice his outside foot shot when it would hit him. Now, this is when we would have sort of a time skip of a week and a half to the match between Barcha and Bastard Munchen. We see Isagi step onto the field, looking at his opponents. So this is the team under the current number one striker. I should have known you'd be here. Kaiser then smiles, looking to Isagi. The lazy dog has shown himself once again. Are you ready to lose here as well? I don't know defeat, Kaiser. Is that so? Well, let me remind you what it tastes like. Isagi then sighs, looking over to Kira, who is arguing with Ness, as he walks by, picking him up by his head and then moving him to a starting position. Let your skills speak for you. There's no need to argue with someone who can play like that. He's not good at all. Kira would then nod, saying, okay, Sagi, as now he would follow his lead. As in the stands, Lavinho looks to Noel Noah. Pay attention, you cyborg. That kid is something dangerous. What are you on about now? Trust me, this one, he's different. I played against him for a while, and he's the first besides you who can truly dance with me. Isagi is seen starting with the ball, and he passes to Kira. Ness is the first to run by and guard him. Let's see what that big talk it was really about. As if someone like you could even hold a candle to me. Kira then opens his eyes, showing a new type of vision that we haven't yet seen before, as he fakes a pass before moving right by Ness. What the? How is he able to move like that? No, it's because he's from in Spain's division. Ness then takes note of Kira's unique dribbling style, as if it's consuming him. But then he sent something else, as if he needed to seal it. He then went for it again, but was dropped to the ground with a quick feint. Stay out of my way, you insect. Kunigami then goes to guard him, only for the ball to bounce right to Bachira. He gets it, with everyone noticing his new dribbling style, as he almost has a shot but Kaiser comes out of nowhere and stops him. Wow, you guys aren't half bad at all, but this is as far as you go, if that's what you think. He then drops the ball back to Kira who would smile. This angle was blocked off, but with these eyes, I'll create a new one. Kira then hits the ball with the outside of his foot and it hits the crossbar before landing right in front of Yoichi Isagi. What a great pass, Runt. Isagi then scores the first goal of this match while smiling. Yo, Lavinho, make sure you stay warmed up. I'm not done sparring with you. You're too cocky, kid. Keep focusing on what's right in front of you before you come try to challenge me again. Whatever. Just don't be mad if I destroy them before you even get a chance to. 
Levine Ho is seen smiling, while Kaiser helped Ness get off the ground, asking what happened. I... I have no idea what he just did. Isagi then compliments Kira for his new style. As we learn what that, well, what his eyes were as well. Omniscient observation. As this was his spatial awareness on tenfold, allowing Kira to truly predict how the game will go and how his opponent will move, granting him a short glimpse into the future of the match. But it's only a couple seconds. However, I'd be lying if I said Omni Observation was his only new weapon, as his new style of dribbling mimicked a web from a spider, as once you step into this domain, you only speed up your imminent defeat. Isagi and Kira stared back at Ness and Kaiser, as this was only the beginning. Bastard Munchen then resets the ball, and Kunigami heads forward alone, as soon as confronted by Isagi, as he needs to get right by him. He dribbles pretty well, and his speed has increased a lot, as well as his body, as he's stronger now. Not bad for a fallen hero, but you'll need way more than that to even stand a chance. Isagi gets it and sends the ball up to Bachira and Kira, as the two of them work well together and quickly drop it off to Otoya on the wing. Well, I guess it's my turn to shine a little bit. He cuts back before curving it into the goal, going for a shot, but out of nowhere, Isagi then appears blocking and trapping it. It's mine now. He fakes a shot on the keeper and the keeper would dive as Isagi then walks it into the net, bringing the score to two to zero. Lavinho falls out of his chair laughing at the fact that now his team was about to beat Noel Noah's. Isagi then sighs saying the German team was boring, especially their stars of the team, that being Kaiser and Kunigami. Go ahead though, call him out. I'm waiting. Isagi then turns to the stands, where he can see the room that Lavinho and Noel Noah were sitting in. Well, number one, do you accept my challenge? Noel Noah, of course, ignores Isagi and tells Kaiser to focus on rights in front of him as well for now, as he nods and speeds off with the ball once it's reset, as Ness, Kaiser, and Kunigami actually work together and get a triangle going around the starters of the Barcha team and get into the midfield. The defense of the Barcha team then crowds Kaiser to the point where his shot is blocked off. You idiots. That's still not enough. Kaiser then sends it into the back of the net with his signature weapon, earning Bastard Munchen their first goal. Don't count us out just yet, you monster. Yoichi Isagi can only smirk while slowly continuing to enter the flow state. Bring it on. No. Hold it right there. Isagi then turns, seeing Lavinho and Noel Noah step onto the pitch. So, this is where it truly begins. The beginning of the end. It seems that way, my pupil. But now, watch as I dethrone this robot. You and your student will fail here today. Noel Noah becomes serious and lowers his stance as they begin the match once again. The Barcha team only needs one goal to solidify themselves as an amazing team. Isagi passes to Lavino, who is then stopped by Noel Noah. The number one striker defends him close, but can't seem to stop him by this point. Not bad for a cyborg at all. Lavino is then shocked when Kira steals the ball from him. Well, now it's time for the grand finale. Kira then uses Lavino to hide from Noel Noah as he looks for the best pass. As he goes to kick it though, Ness would appear stopping him. Not this time. Idiot, you fell for it again. Kira then kicks the ball off of his boot, which gives it a different angle that only one player could score from. The defenders on Bastard Moonshin would then scatter around, not wondering, well, wondering where the ball would land. But it's trapped by Isagi, who can only smile. No, this isn't what I want. Isagi then runs the ball backwards towards his own goal, but then stops in the midfield, turning around as by now, the Germany midfield and defense had reset themselves. That's more like it. I want to crush all of you, one by one. Lavino is then seen standing next to Isagi. Sorry, kid. I can't let you have all the fun. That's fine with me. Whichever one of us can get by and score is a new number one. I like the stakes on that. I'm in. Lavino and Isagi. Stand up straight, both smiling as they both would enter the flow state here. 
as some of the Germany players become nervous seeing this, as what's about to happen, there's no way they can stop this duo. However, Kaiser and Noel Noah would step up to face them. Let's even things out, Kaiser. Right. These four then stand at the center of the field, watching each other, waiting on the next move. Isagi would look to Kaiser and completely ignores him, running straight for the current number one. Show me what makes you so special. Bring it, Yoichi Isagi. Isagi smirks, calling him a cyborg before chopping the ball into a nutmeg type of move. As it goes right under Noel Noah, he then turns his body and blocks off the path from Isagi. You've got a lot to learn about the world of football. Noel Noah then turns to pass to Kaiser, but Lavinho cuts it off. Isagi then bodies Noel Noah back, making the number one change his expression. I see. Together, you two do pose a problem. Kaiser. Ness. Let's go. Noel Noah shows off his incredible skill and speed by getting around Isagi and then heading forward towards the goal. He passes to Ness who then floats the ball to Kaiser. Nice pass, you two. Now back to me. Kaiser goes to pass to Noel Noah, but is stopped by Kira. Not on my watch. Time for another counter. You annoying pest. As if I'd let you. Kaiser blocks off the path, but is shocked when Kira then backheels the ball to Batra, who sends it up to Lavinho. Noel Noah is quick and sprints that way as well, but Lavinho had already trapped the ball by the time he arrived. The two now began dancing around all the other players with no one else being able to even intervene with this battle. This is fun, you robot. Stop talking and focus, you idiot. Lavinho smirks. I'm not the one to pass, but this kid... I really enjoy playing with him, and he's gotten my attention. He then flicks the ball to Isagi who traps it, with Ness and Kaiser guarding him. Isagi. Isagi then gets the ball, and he backs up. Well, I guess I better use it now. Isagi shows off his left-footed formless shot, utilizing the backflip. However, the head of Noel Noah sends it back out. No one knows where it would land, except for one player. Megami Batra performs a scissor kick mid-air, scoring the last goal of the match before falling onto the ground. He gets up yelling in excitement with the Barcha team surrounding him. Lavino goes to speak with Batra as well, with Isagi standing there in silence. He thinks about his last goal, and how he should have been the one to score. But he also wasn't able to get around Noel Noah. But why was that? Could the gap between himself and and the number one striker be that big? He then hears a voice. Yoichi Isagi. Your talents really are impressive. Isagi then turns, seeing the Mr. Number One himself. But you lack many things. Talent can only take you so far. As you are, that talent will be overwhelmed by another player who works even harder and has discipline over their skills. Noah Noah then turns focusing on Kaiser and Ness, who were standing talking. With just your raw talent alone, you could become a great pro footballer. Maybe even one of the best, but I would still remain far above you in terms of skill. Isagi, I just have one question for you. Would you still love football, even if you had no talent in this sport? Isagi's heart drops at this question, as he doesn't have an answer just yet. And by the time he looks back up at Noel Noah, he was gone with his team. Isagi then returns to the Spain stratosphere of Blue Lock and sits in a room alone for a while. He watches all his amazing plays from the last match and many matches before that while in Blue Lock. A God-given talent is what me and the number one striker have. But he works harder, knowing someone could come rival him at any time. His discipline to train and become better each second of the day is what makes the gap between us so immense. Isagi then leans up with the towel still on his head and his eyes now glowing. Fine then, I'll just close that gap with sure willpower. Ego and his assistant were looking at Isagi in this room with Jinpachi Ego becoming nervous but still smiling. Pay attention, Henri. We're about to witness 
the rebirth of Yoichi Isagi. The Barcha team wakes up the next day to their training. However, Isagi was already on the pitch to their shock. It was 7 a.m. so Isagi had to be there for at least an hour ahead. Isagi saw them walk in and smiled. Yo, come help me train, runt. I need five of you idiots to join me. Kira, Batra, Otoya, and others would join this training as it will be a three versus three. Isagi takes Picasso and Gomez on his team. And the 3v3 match would begin. Isagi starts with the ball and rushes forward before he's confronted by Kira. It's only fitting that I would be the one to guard you. Isagi doesn't speak and he does a no look pass to Gomez before going to use his strange strength to then run right by Kira and receive the pass back. Isagi then jumps, trapping it, and doesn't even look at the ball. As he does so, he turns his head and passes to Espino. It was a near perfect pass in which he shoots. The blue lock keeper just hits it back out and the players scatter around trying to get the loose ball, but Isagi was somehow already there. All the players then stood back in shock, watching as he was in a perfect flow state. Isagi would plant his foot and this slow motion is as if time would slow down as he now was focusing on something else. Isagi focuses on his form and power, sending it straight by the players and into the back of the net. If my formless shot was already this strong, I wonder how strong a shot like this could truly become. This will be Isagi's newest weapon, the outbreak shot, as it's defined as a sudden violent eruption of true power that can't be stopped by any means, as this was the technique created to rival the Kaiser Impact. However, Isagi's shot was different due to the fact that he could perform it whenever he pleases and whichever foot he chooses. The six players then continue this match as their intense training goes over for the next couple of days until another match would appear as it will be against Italy and their Ubers team. Now, one thing I will say is Baru still hasn't accepted the goal, well, the deal from Snuffy just yet so Sendo will still be their main striker for the team. Isagi is seen suiting up with a smile on his face. Kira was actually shocked how much had changed about him because of that last match. Isagi stands up, heading towards the door. As usually, everyone walked far behind him onto the pitch, but this time they were close behind him as he led them onto the field. Isagi stayed with the same smile on his face and was met with yet another man himself. Don Lorenzo. Hey there, Isagi. It's been a while. Yeah, it sure has. I see you still have those filthy grills in your mouth. How about I rip them out? Lorenzo then widens his smile, claiming that today is the day where Isagi will finally be devoured. Yeah, right. I can't lose. The only person who can defeat me is me, and you know that. Lorenzo laughs and returns to the Uber side as they all stare at Isagi, even Oliver Aiku and Aryu. The match then begins, with the Ubers team passing around the ball in the midfield with perfect chemistry. Nico and Lorenzo then switch as he takes the ball up next. Lorenzo shows off his formerly zombie dribbling style and he gets him right by a bunch of the players from the Barca team, but he had his body blocked off by Isagi. It's funny how you claim you wish to devour me. Yet, you're using a style that I taught you. The ace eater would scoff, and he has to watch as the ball would then roll to Kira. He passes out wide to Otoya, who then sprints forward. Now they were on the counter. Players from the Ubers team ready themselves as Megumi Bachira would receive the ball next. Alright, let's have some fun. He dribbles around them with ease before he's put into a trap. He's not only surrounded and cut off from his team, but he doesn't have any space to dribble at all. Nico then appears stealing the ball from him and heading forward. Lorenzo would drop back into the defense and a pass is sent to Sento, or Sendo. The former U20 striker gets the ball and turns it around to the defenders of Barcha. I'll defeat you, Isagi. He shoots a wide open shot towards the goal and as it was going in, the head of Kira then knocked it out. 
not on my watch. Kira's eyes are shown to have that unique pattern as he runs forward chasing the ball. He gets it with Sendo still in front of him. It's all yours. He passes to Gomez who then dribbles before he's poor, well forced to pass to Isagi. Lorenzo steps up facing him, claiming this is where things would get interesting. No Lorenzo, they don't at all. Isagi takes a deep breath, opening his eyes, once again, seeming completely different. He was now in the state of flow and ran circles around Lorenzo. Still, the new Gen 11 defender was right on Isagi, having Aryu and Aiku be ready as well. There's no way he thinks he can get by all three of us. Isagi would lift his head not even looking down at the ball anymore. Let's make one thing clear here today. Isagi then shows off his new formless dribbling style that ravages through all three defenders. Isagi then scores a regular shot after and looks back at them while still in flow. My goal is to defeat the number one striker and nothing will stop me from achieving that goal. Aiku then sits back smiling. Damn, he's even stronger than the last time. I should have known. Batra, who was near them, would then speak up. Well, thanks to our first match against Mr. Number One himself, Isagi, well, he began to train. But then, all the Ubers gained hope, hearing a voice, as it was a voice of Snuffy. Stick to our plan, and we will win. They would get up with Aiku declaring to Isagi, his technique is impressive, but he'll be stopped the next time. Looks like that strategist master of yours still doesn't get it just yet and what Spain truly is. It's freedom in football, but the most free place for wild animals like the Barca team is the jungle. So you Ubers are just out of your element. Here we'd visualize or get a visualization of a jungle on the pitch with the flow of each animal and of the insects of each player on Barcha's team. Mark Snuffy would turn to Lavino, calling him impressive, as even he's shocked by this. But Lavino is seen lying back, taking the credit even though he didn't do much. The only thing that he did was allow this growth to happen, as these players just needed someone to motivate them. All they truly needed was a place to grow. The Ubers were now on high alert for Isagi and his amazing plays. Sendo passes it back to Nico, who passes it outside to another player. They begin passing in order to keep it away from the Barcher players, and this worked to a degree. However, Sendo was marked by Kira the same way that Lorenzo was staying on Isagi. Nico gets the ball and isn't too far away from the box and has to make a decision. This is when Lorenzo would shout out for a pass. Nico then smiled, setting it to Lorenzo as he scores the first goal, tying the game. The Ubers are then excited for this goal, but each player on the Barcha team seems to not be worried at all. Snuffy himself finds that last play puzzling as Yoichi Isagi should have moved with Lorenzo to guard him, but he stayed still which freed up space for Sendo even more. But Yoichi Sagi, what was he planning? They then pass the ball back up to Isagi, who sets it up. Hey Kira, up front with me. Let's move right. Kira then gets the first pass and runs behind Isagi with the ball. This was a strange way to start the game, but these two... Well, they were so close. Lorenzo guarded Isagi, but he switches with Kira, and he goes to get the ball. The two would then smile, as they do something no one could predict, not even Snuffy himself. Kira leaves the ball rolling to Isagi, who then continues to dribble, getting right by Lorenzo with it. The two continue to steal the ball or leave it off for each other, causing the Uber's midfield to then crash upon them. Isagi turns his back to Kira, giving him the final touch, before the ball was sent to the outside, to Otoya. He traps it and looks ahead with so much free space in front of him. He dashes ahead, not wasting any time, as Aiku is the one to guard him. But Otoya takes on the challenge. 
His quick dribbling style and creativeness allows him to somewhat challenge Aiku and get by him, but he manages to hit the ball off course. This is where we see Kira with his omniscient observation smiling. The pass is perfect. Isagi gets ready only to have Lorenzo block him off and Aryu jump up for the ball. Isagi then gets a flashback to the body block of Noel and Noah and he yells out, not again. Something was truly missing and he knew it from his game. Isagi then spins around Lorenzo, escaping the ace eater and then jumping higher than Aryu before heading the ball into the goal. Isagi lands clutching his fist and he yells out, I've been so trapped by always having the ball at my feet. My movement has never been this good. Snuffy and Lavinho both have their eyes widened as the off-ball movement from Isagi was something different from the regular ones of other players as it was special in its own unique way. Only certain players could have complete control over their entire body like that. And he just happened to be one of them. This is what he was missing from his goal scoring formula. This off ball movement paired with his God given talent and his ability to score from any angle makes him the most complete player or striker on the pitch currently. This was the new Yoichi Isagi created from the loss to Noel Noah. Lorenzo had fell to the ground due to Isagi's movement, and the striker himself looked down at him. The new Gen 11 defender, well, no. The new Gen 11 is nothing when compared to me. All of you are below my feet, as I am the only honored one on this field. Isagi walks back to his starting position, with Aiku helping Lorenzo get up. So, do we even have a chance against him now? Well, it depends, Aiku. Can we stop him before he gets near the goal? All the defenders then glare knowing what they have to do. Sendo begins the game again by passing to Drago, who sends it back to Lorenzo. Let's go for a different approach. He passes out to the wing, but Barcha had changed information as well and cut off that pass. The Ubers try to move quick, where the Barcha team, well, they had some amazing chemistry themselves as each one of them does a one-touch pass around the field, getting it closer and closer to the goal. However, Batra was now the one striker headed towards the goal. He gets it and sends it right to Kira. Now for the finale. He then hits it against the crossbar, where it bounces back into the midfield, where we see Sagi hanging back, not being guarded by anyone else, as through all the chaos, he has slipped away, from the grip of Lorenzo and into the shadows. Isagi watched the ball bounce and smiled to himself. A pass fitting for a monster like me. The last goal of the match was now all around the world as everyone yelled in excitement at Isagi's final shot. The Barcha team then surrounds him completely and jumps on his back praising his skill in that last shot as it was a team goal and couldn't be done without them. Jinpachi Igo would sit back in his chair looking at the screen. So this is Yoichi Isagi in his truest form. A striker that seems to have no limit. Isagi walks off the pitch with Lavinho later praising his team for their development. But this isn't over at all. They still have many more matches that they need to complete. So they need to develop their chemistry even further and they'll keep winning. Your weapons are good as they are. Each one of the players and smiles looking around and then they look to Isagi. Let's get going you idiotic footballers. We have some work to do and I'm trying to get to sleep as soon as possible. They begin laughing while following Isagi and Lavinho out of the room as more days of their intense training go by until we see the Barcha team walking out onto the field once again. Isagi looks to Ryo, Nagi and Shigiri smiling. This should be a good match. Agi then shows himself as well. Hello there Isagi, it's been a while. Agi and Isagi walk up to each other and perform a handshake. How have you been Agi? I've been great, thanks for asking. 
I guess today is finally the day. Yeah, it seems that way. Each of them walks away while stating that they'll be the victor. It then goes into a flashback of where these two met in the underground street ball tournament. As Agi was traveling to Japan with his family and his club team for a summer league, he saw Isagi playing around in the underground arena and then joined his team. As at first Isagi wouldn't pass to him at all. But after Agi stole the ball from him, surprising him, and then scoring a tremendous goal, he began passing back to him as the two became inseparable and they actually played together all summer long. Each one of them seemed to have an immense skill and talent in the sport. However, they never played one single one-on-one -on -one match to decide who was better. Each summer when Agi came back, he was even better than before, but he also soon began to notice that Isagi lost his love for football. This caused the two of them to slowly grow apart as well. As now, in their early teens, we see them laying down on a rooftop, with Agi being the first to stand up while looking at the sunset, and he turned to a person he could almost call his brother. The next time I see you, Isagi, I'll be the one to beat you. Well, Agi, I hate to break it to you, but Isagi isn't cut off. I know. The only person that can beat you is you. But we have the exact same playstyle. So, if I were to become as strong as you, I think I'd win. Why do you say that? Because I simply just love football more than you do. Isagi sits up staring back at him before lying down while laughing. Yeah, you do. Go ahead though. I'll still win no matter what. It's my job. To keep a person like you wishing they had more. The two then do their handshake as this will be the last time Isagi sees Agi before this match. The match then starts and Isagi passes to Bachira. He one touch passes to Kira who sends it back to Isagi in a triangle like formation as Agi and Isagi stare each other down with Agi taking the first step towards his old friend only to see him pass again. That was strange. Isagi then sprinted right by Agi jumping in the air receiving another pass from Picasso. Pay attention runt. He then heads the ball to Kira who grabs it but it's stolen by Chigiri. Not a bad play at all, but this one is mine. Chigiri turns with the ball and sprints away, not wasting any time as now they were on the counter. He then passes to Agi, who turns, seeing a few of Barcha's players near him. As he taps into his own flow state after a couple of tries, Agi becomes serious, dribbling through all of them, and he turns his body, scoring with his left foot. He then looks back to Isagi, expecting some sort of reaction out of him. But he wasn't even paying attention. Instead, it seemed he was surveying the entire field and taking information. Isagi watched how each player had reacted, but it seems they were more focused, well, more focused on him than anything else. So, they must have studied his off-ball movement. Seems they prepared for me a little bit. What do you think, Runt? Kira then smiles with his eyes looking around as well. Let's go for something a little more direct then. Kiro would start with the ball this time, and Isagi gets it heading forward, as Agi and Ryo are seen preparing themselves for this new Isagi, but are shocked watching him, as he's still in flow. After this realization, both of them are crossed and outsped by the striker. Another midfielder comes for Isagi, but he slows down turning and gets the ball around him, opening up another shot as it would be a long distance to mid-range shot. He swings his leg, as Agi would suddenly appear, blocking it off, but Isagi fakes the shot and turns once again to his right foot, going for the exact same shot. Pretty predictable. Isagi then goes to shoot, but Ryo was this person that blocked him this time, setting it out of bounds as Barcha is giving a corner kick. Isagi then looks down at both players who had fallen to the ground. Well, isn't that unique? Since the only person who can beat me is me. You two idiots have become just like me. This is when we see Agi and Ryo both in a flow state similar to that of Isagi. Kira would go to the corner setting up the ball and Barch's team steps outside the box and seems they're preparing 
to run in all together. Kiro waves his hand down and all the players crash into the box, being guarded by one of the players from Manshine's team. Kira smiles and then sends the ball towards the box, only for it to curve out back into the midfield for only one player who still hadn't moved at all. Isagi performs an outbreak volley shot, scoring a goal to then tie the game. Kira and Isagi will both smile, acknowledging each other for that goal, as Ryo calls the duo of monsters insane for trying that. But Agi doesn't seem to be worried at all, since they have a monster of their own. This is when the focus is drawn to Nagi, who hasn't done much in this match just yet, as he seems ready and he starts with the ball. He dribbles ahead, creating a trap style dribbling that gets him even closer to the goal. He then passes to the outside to Chiguri, who speeds by the defense, and he goes on to go for his 44 Panther shot, but it's stopped by Botcher who smiles. Not here, princess. Chiguri will continue to smile as well, shooting anyway, as Bachara hits the ball off course, but Nagi is the one to trap it midair, turning it into a pass. So this is what competitive football truly is. How exciting. Nagi scores the second goal for Manshine City, causing the Bacha players to become a little more serious here, especially Sagi himself. So they have three dominant players that want to challenge me. Okay, have at it. Isagi heads forward into the midfield with Agi and Nagi guarding him. Nagi isn't able to keep up, causing Ryo to jump in as well. And for the first time since Noel Noah, Isagi was struggling. So he began smiling. His speed suddenly increased and his combos got faster. As one of the players began to recognize his style, it was Levinho himself sitting back. Haven't seen that in a while. Seems like you're finally... Well, waking up. Chris Prince didn't understand, but Isagi was slowly unlocking his true self through his training and now playing against someone who was on his level. Isagi and Agi battle it out on the field as equals, but it seems that Agi can't even predict his movements anymore, as Isagi's formless dribbling while twisting and turning got him open time and time again, but he still didn't take the shot. So what was he planning? Isagi would then stop dribbling and looks right to Agi. Tell me, what makes you think that we're equal? Was it because you played me or played with me each summer and we crushed everyone? Agi, I don't think you realized it. But that entire time, you could have been crushed as well. Isagi then performs multiple stepovers, causing Agi to step towards the ball in the wrong direction. And Isagi does it around the world to catch him off guard, opening himself up in a free space. As Isagi then turns his body while also lifting the ball, going for his outbreak shot. However, Ryo would appear again. This time, instead of shooting it, he does a formless shot while lifting the ball. And this is his second goal to tie the game. You two are just cheap fucking copies that can't compete with how incredible I truly am. Kira, Batra, and Otoya would jump on Isagi, commending him for that last goal as it was incredible, but Isagi was silent. He thinks about each time that he's entered the flow state, but says that this time would be much different than any other. Isagi truly feels one with himself and everything around him. Yo, Isagi, that was a nice goal, but let's close out this match. He turns seeing Lavinho sub into the game while smiling. Shall we finish off this game and claim victory for Spain? Not so fast, you mad dancer. I'm going to be the hero of this story. Chris Prince walks out as well while smiling and while laughing. The match then begins with Nagi being subbed out for Chris Prince here and Agi being left in. Chris Prince dribbles ahead with Lavinho defending. As shockingly, he pushes the master striker off his body and heads forward alone. I can feel a spark incoming. He passes to Chigiri, who gives it back to him, but he stopped. Isagi then appears, body blocking him off the ball in the same manner that Noel Noah did to him. Damn it! Now that he had the ball, Isagi flicked it over his head and sent a rocket pass to Lavinho, Spain's master that makes short work of all the players on Manchester City's team, even Rio, 
as he was copying Oliver Aiku's defending style, can't do anything about it. As this match would end 3-2, with Lavinho scoring the final goal of the match, as Barca's team celebrated all over the world for their last three performances. Isagi himself stood tall, knowing he completely stopped the world's number two, which could only mean one thing, as there's only one person left waiting on him. He heads off of the field declaring, the only person who can beat me is me.